So Ian, you've just recently been appointed the principal here at the Conservatory High School, although you've been doing the job for a while, but the question I want to start the interview with is, what would your old school principal have given you the chances of becoming a school principal? None! None! Uh, in fact, my old deputy principal, uh, who I was regularly in his office, um, my old deputy principal eventually became a mentor to me when I finally got a, my deputy's job at this school. He became a mentor. I, I caught up with him and uh, said, how on earth did you run a school? And you were really good. And you're, you're such an interesting person. And how did you do it? And uh, you know, he gave me quite a few tips on how to be a deputy. But at the time, they, they didn't even want me to study music. I didn't start music until the last term of year 11. I'd never studied it before. And I wanted to pick it up and go to the conservatorium. And everyone at the school laughed except the music teachers. And they said, no, no, you can do that. So, uh, but the principal at the time would have thought, no chance, this guy's a reprobate. He's a recidivist. He needs to end up in, you know, in boys' home or something. You know, I, I wasn't the, the best student, put it that way. So does that, that, surely that makes you a better school principal? Well, I think it does. I think it does too. I think it does because I've got, I understand what most of the tricks are going to be. I've got, a, I've got an idea of, of a, you know, someone who's going to try and weasel their way out of it or not do the work or whatever, because I've tried that. And, you know, failed. I learned what failure was all about very early in life. <laughs> so when, when, how did music fit into your early life? Uh, well, Mum, mum uh, we, we went to church. Mum sang. She always sang. And Mum and Dad used to sing duets. So if there was a party at home, Mum and Dad would sing duets and harmonies. And when, when we went to church, uh, Mum would start off, you'd be sitting next to Mum, she'd start off singing the melody in the hymn, but by the second verse she would start to harmonise, and by the third or fourth verse she's doing the obligatos, that, you know, just ridiculous harmony parts. And that was sort of like, oh, that's what you're supposed to do when you're singing. Okay. So we always just sang, and we would sing harmonies just for fun. Uh, but that was it. That was it. I, I didn't did, didn't study music. Mum, did, mum, did they listen to music at home? Dad listened to some swing. Yes. Uh, mum listened to a little bit of sort of Simon and Garfunkel and, and a bit of Elvis, and uh, and so I had this jazz, pop, rock and roll stuff going on. Uh, but my cousins were into like Led Zeppelin, and you know, and so I had this really vast array, but no classical music whatsoever. And it wasn't until um, I was at the end of high school, uh, or at the end of year 11, I did a school musical. And I was walking across the stage, at uh, across the, the playground at school, and the guy who was directing the show, it was Fiddle on the Roof, he was directing the show, he was walking the other way, and I thought, oh, for a gag, for a laugh. And I went, if I were a rich man, the other, and kept walking, you know. And I didn't go for the audition. Uh, and anyway, the guys who did go for the audition were sent down by him to collect me from the playground and have me come up and audition. And I got the part, and uh, that was the beginning of my musical experience, apart from the very, very casual stuff. And, I, I, you know, the, the, the band director at school was Brian McGuinness. Uh, the music teachers were Marion Anstison and uh, Katrina Stafford. And they were all incredible music teachers, just phenomenal. And my experience was so good, I loved it so much that I thought, well, I want to do what they do. They've just given me the chance of a lifetime. So, so was it the musical that actually really focused you on music, or was it, it something beforehand? Uh, it was the musical that really focused me. Because music wasn't something that you did apart from it being a casual, fun thing. Mm. So we sang. We sang, you know, we made up harmonies to songs. You sang in church. You sang... Uh, you know, for fun, you li at parties, you would sing, you know, I had to start singing when Dad decided he wasn't going to sing harmonies with Mum, you know, there's a hole in the bucket or whatever, you know, I'd have to sing the other parts, you know, because that's how it was. But that was all just for fun. So you didn't play a musical instrument? No. So when did the guitar go? Well, I started playing the guitar once I, I decided I wanted to go to the conservatorium. I, I played a few songs and learned to play some of the Paul Simon and that Simon and Garfunkel and stuff and got into, got into that because I needed to do something. Uh, uh, that was, you know, late high school. And you came to the conservatorium? Yeah. Tell us about the audition. I mean, you weren't exactly <laughs> over-prepared. Well, but, but so, so the funny thing is, I couldn't do music on my timetable. 
uh, at school because I was doing engineering science and physics and chemistry and 300 maths, I was going to be an engineer. And so I dropped engineering science to take up music, but it wasn't on the timetable at the time. So the music teachers vouched for me. The principal and the deputy principal thought it was a, a complete joke, that I was a joke and I shouldn't be doing this. But the music teachers vouched for me and said they'd help me with the music uh, and I would study music in my own time. So I sat in the corridors and sang songs and played the guitar and then had lessons after school with the music teachers and they helped me. And the, the, the head of music at the school, Katrina Stafford, learnt piano from Svajensky here. She was a phenomenon. And so they selected my repertoire. I did Fiddle on the Roof, I did If I Were a Rich Man, but I also did The Earl King. Now, I didn't know that I shouldn't be singing a song like that at 16. So I'd sang The Earl King for the HSC and Fiddle on the Roof and, and uh, some Mendelssohn and something or other else, you know, this great repertoire that I knew nothing about. But they were beautiful songs, but the teachers helped me select them. So then they said, right, so when you go to the con, you'll do those same pieces for your audition, except maybe not this one and do this one instead. And of course, Katrina Stafford, a phenomenal piano player, wonderful musician, um, she accompanied me for my auditions and things. And I turn up to the con and my vocal audition, because I auditioned as a singer, but I wanted to be a music teacher. So I turn up and they say, so why are you here at the, uh, at the music education um, uh, interview? Uh, and most people who were there said, well, I don't know that I'll get into the performance course, so I'm doing this as a backstop so I can transfer. And I walked in and said, I want to be a music teacher. I can't wait. This is fantastic. I've had the best music teachers you could imagine. I want to do what they do. It's unreal. And they're like, right, you're in, you know. <laughs> and my, oral, my ear was good, but I couldn't read notation. I couldn't read a jot of music. And so I get into first year and John Terry was my oral teacher. And I was in the lowest oral class and I was worse than useless, except my ear was good, uh, but I couldn't write a note. I didn't even understand the stave properly. And he, uh, he, in six months, he taught me, just in you know, classes each week, and I went from being in the lowest class to the second top, top class, because uh, I actually started to understand it. I was taught what I needed to do. I did music one, the easiest music at, the high, at high school. And so here I am at the con, with people who could sight read and were just phenomenal musicians. And I was this pretender. <laughs> but I wanted to be a music teacher. So you studied singing here? Yes. And you did a bit of clarinet as well? Uh, no, I did a little bit of... Um, oh, well, actually, we had to do a little bit of... Uh, everything. Everything. A bit of woodwind, a bit of brass. And I chose the instruments that were the most easily transportable if I had to carry them home. Uh, so... Uh, you know, I did clarinet for, you know, a turn. Uh, I did trumpet for a turn. I did double bass because you couldn't take that home at all. So you just left it at the, at the con. So that was, you know, I didn't have to carry that on the bus. Uh, so, yeah, I did a little bit of all of that because you had to. Uh, but I didn't, I, I, I could, couldn't read music onto an instrument. It was beyond me. Uh, and I only learned to read through studying here at the con. Yeah. So, you finished your music degree. Presumably yeah. you passed. I did. I did. That's good. <laughs> Congratulations. I did. That's well right. done. I did pass. I did. Yes. Uh, I, you know, most people... Did. My parents laughed when I said I was going to go to the con. Yes. Uh, and a lot of people didn't think I, I should. Yes. Because I didn't have any of the prerequisites. Yes. Except the passion, mm. the love of music, and I could sing, mm. and uh, my ear was pretty good. I could make yes. up harmonies to just about anything on the spot. Uh, and, you know, with Judy Bailey doing a jazz unit, you know, we'd stand in a circle and she'd make a swap fours. And I was in seventh heaven, you know, that was great. Um, but so I passed and, and, and uh, I go along. Lindsay Aikert is, is the guy who's choosing people who, where you're going to go as a, as a teacher. And he said, uh, right, so do you want a job? And I said, yes. He said, right, well, you'll go where we send you. I said, no, look, I, I, need to, I want to live in Sydney. I want to work in Sydney. He said, you'll just go where we send you. I said, no, but I really, I've, you know, I've got a, got a girlfriend, I've got a life here. He said, do you want a job or do you not want a job? I said, well, yeah, I want a job. He said, so you'll just go where we send you. And uh, he sent me to Mount Druitt High School. And I worked at Mount Druitt for three years. And it was the best thing that could have happened to me. So tell me about day one at Mount Druitt High School. For those people who don't know, it's, it's an area with a bit of an attitude and so on. 
Yeah, look, uh, at the time, uh, the demographic was, was pretty tough um, and there was a lack of care for education. A very strong preponderance of people uh, on welfare and no real care for education. It was, it was pretty sad. But um, we turn up and there were 10, 15 new teachers every year at Mount Druitt High School because the turnover was so rapid. Uh, anyway, the principal, the deputy principal got up and said, right, if you've got a problem in your classroom, you deal with it. I don't want to know about it. I'm dealing with the playground. You deal with your classroom. That's your business. And we're like, wow, okay. <laughs> That's going to be fun. And, uh, and the school counsellor got up and said, uh, right, so uh, I'm your counsellor as much as I am the counsellor for the students. And uh, if you need to have a mental health day, you just take a day. Come and see me anytime. And I was like, we're going to need to see this guy. This is a bit of a this is a bit scary, um, and it was a really interesting time. I learned every uh, classroom management trick you needed. I've never needed to learn another classroom management. I've needed to learn more people management tricks, but not classroom management. I learned what I had to do in those first three years. Uh, it was fantastic. It was great training ground, and some of the kids were marvelous. But the music was very thin on the ground. I didn't do much music teaching. Which was probably good because I wasn't much of a musician at the time. <laughs> I still had some time to go. Uh, so I did a master's degree at, uh, at UNSW for, for a bit of fun in between times to build my music skills. And um, yeah, and that was fun driving from Mount Druitt to, to Kensington two or three afternoons a week. And <laughs> anyway... So, yeah, I had a great time. So, so you were doing a, um, a master's, but tell me, were you developing your musical skills at all? Were you playing in a group? Or? Oh, I played from the time I, I was at university at the Con here. I met some musicians, and they were seriously good musicians, you know, like very, very good. One guy could play all any fretted stringed instrument you put in yes. front of him. Another guy could play keys and oboe and whistles and stuff. Well, I was in a folk band. Yes. And, I, and in fact, I still make music with one of those guys, Michael Spencer. Uh, you know, thirty-five, whatever it is, years later. Uh, yeah, we played. We played in in um, all over the place, all over New South Wales, all over Sydney. Festivals, clubs, the national festival. We supported international acts and all that sort of stuff. So I was making music. I was singing. I was playing guitar and bazooki and that sort of stuff, and singing. Uh, and so I was making music, but not of the not of the variety that would appear in many classrooms in in high schools. Yes. But that was all right. I mean, yeah. So was... after those three years went by, we you obviously did marvellous things with those students. <laughs> Where to next? I got a transfer to Pennon Hills High School. A, a, a principal rang me after I went back for the first day of my fourth year and I thought, oh, I didn't get a transfer. You can only transfer after three years in the department. I thought I didn't get a transfer. So I've gone back to work and, and I get a phone call. Oh, you've got to come down to the staff and there's a phone call for you. So I go down. And I said, yeah, hello. And he says, look, I'm at uh, Pennant Hills High School and I'm wondering if you'd like to transfer to Pennant Hills High School. I said, yes, I would. Uh, where's Pennant Hills? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Pennant Hills was phenomenal. Such a different place. In fact, some of the people who I would truly call musical treasures, um, people like Liz Scott, people like um, Jason Isaac, these people are working with the arts unit. These people are t taking, you know, serious, serious ensembles. Um, I taught those kids. They're in my classes and my choir at Pennant Hills High School, you know. Uh, so I was surrounded by phenomenal uh, musicians and young people. And they inspired me easily as much as I did anything for them. Uh, and, uh, but that, that, I was so inspired by my teachers that I thought, oh, I've just got to make things happen for them. You know, the, the, my teachers made things happen for me. My music teachers set a path for me. And uh, I was inspired by them. So I thought, there's, you know, purpose. I had purpose. Yeah. And how long did you stay there? I was there for six years and, uh, and ended up sort of relieving a, as the head teacher music at, at that school, which was quite, I thought was quite an honour. Uh, an amazing uh, place with great young musicians and I'm still in contact with quite a few of those people um, some of the staff but uh, quite a number of the students and you know they're colleagues I've hired I've hired those people to work for me at other schools since you know 
Uh, several of them. So Pennant Hills High School, where to? For, I've transferred to back to my alma mater. I got to work at the Forest High, and the woman who was my classroom classroom I didn't have time at the same time. My classroom music teacher was the head of music now, and I worked for her for seven or eight years. She was my head teacher, and I was what an opportunity, you know, brilliant music musician, brilliant music teacher, and she just said, well. You make things happen. What do you want to happen? And I said, well, why aren't musicals happening back at the school? You know, I came back here. I thought they'd be still happening and they, they weren't. And she said, well, off you go. So uh, in 11 years at the Forest High, I did um, maybe nine years of musicals. And I was, you know, at first I, I was thought I was just going to be the musical director but the people who were, you know, I asked if they would direct, said, oh, yeah, yeah, I can help. But I ended up being the director and the musical director, you know, and the, and the sound and lighting guy, and, you know, yada, yada, yada. In fact, I started teaching, I learned about a new course that was being developed where you could teach a VET type course, a TAFE course, at schools in music production, live production, theatre and events. And so I studied at NIDA part time. Uh, to do that course so that I could then teach that course in my school and then create a technical crew for the musicals. <laughs> Smart. Yeah, and so I had kids from uh, Kalani Heights, kids from Freshwater, kids from Manly Selective, kids from Davidson coming to the Forest High and learning with me and kids from Forest High learning this course and they were my crew. So now we had a built-in crew uh, and we did musicals. It was so much fun and because... That's what the school had done for me. Yes. So I did that for the school for you know many a year, and it was a blast. So much fun. But did you think that you might stay there forever? Or... Well, look, I sort of thought I might, but it was interesting. The principal, when I first arrived uh, after a year or so, said, All right, "We need to go for a walk around the school." Then I said, oh, "Okay." Well, regularly do that I can do that I'm sure you know <laughs> so we go for a walk around the school and he said uh, right uh, you will be lining up to be a head teacher I expect and I said oh will I and he said well yes but you know the, the head teacher of music at this school will retire there will not be a head teacher of music at this school there will not be head teachers of music in many schools there'll be head teachers of creative and performing arts they'll look after music dance drama visual arts and what are your skills in those areas and I said well you know, I'm right into drama and, and music theatre and stuff and um, and acting. You know, that, that was sort of my where I started. Mm -hmm. He said, good, right, so you can teach some drama. I said, what? He said, you'll, you'll teach some drama elective for uh, at least a year or two so that we can tick that box on your on your skill set. And um, what's your second subject? I said, oh, well, theoretically, it's history. He said, right, you'll teach some history. Uh, and so I then taught drama and history and a few other bits and pieces and did did these different things so that he said you'll be able to apply for a job here or somewhere else but as a creative and performing arts head teacher and uh, in fact the head teacher of visual arts he uh, um, his untimely death he retired <laughs> his untimely death uh, the head of music she retired and um, the position arose in the school so I applied and got the position as head teacher at that school. And it was a blast because by then I was doing, I was running the musicals, I was directing them, I was teaching the theatre and performance, uh, uh, live production theatre and events course, and teaching music. And, you know, it, I, I had the time of my life. Uh, and now I was a head teacher. And uh, I never thought I would be a deputy. I, I thought, ah, that's it, I'm, I'm here for, for good. And a new deputy came to the school and he was such an interesting man and so connected with the kids. Normally I'd seen deputies and principals who were very disconnected, distant from the students, um, ceremonial and disciplinarian. But this guy, he didn't do discipline so much as he instilled in them self-discipline through connection. And I thought, I could do that. And he said to me, you can do this. You should apply. But I'm, I'm here, I've just got this gig, I'm having the time of my life doing this. Yes, but you should start applying for deputies jobs. I'm like, I don't, I don't know that I want to. He said, just apply. If you get one, you can decide then. And uh, so I did, I just started applying for jobs. 
and I want, my heart wasn't in it. I actually applied for maybe 10 deputies jobs, but my heart wasn't in it. Uh, and then the deputies job came up at Conservatorium High School. And all of a sudden my heart was in it. So I got the gig. And uh, I've now been here for 15 years. <laughs> what a blast! <laughs> and what a, what, a, what a different school to come to. How did you find the Conservatorium High School? Because you, you haven't been an ex-student. You, it's, no. It's a very different school, isn't it? It most certainly is. And look, this was... Uh, I, I uh, as you can probably tell from my manner, I have quite a, a reasonably healthy ego. I like to think I'm pretty good, you know. Uh, but I had always been a little bit of a pretender, a bit of a... a, 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 a I don't know. A ring in. Yes. In, in the music world, because I c couldn't read onto an instrument. Still couldn't. I could sight sing by now. Uh, and I played a few instruments, but I couldn't read onto them. Uh, and here I am turning up at the Conservatorium of Music. And I had some friends at the con who came through the high school and they were phenomenal. And so I turn up here and uh, I had what would probably be the most humbling experience, uh, humiliating is probably a better word, but humbling experience, that uh, every child at the school was better than me at the thing at which I claimed to be an expert. And this was very good for me. <laughs> this was really good for me. So, so when you went home in the evening, what went through your mind? I've got to be better. I have, uh, I believe, I could be wrong, but people have said this, that I tend to be a, a people person. And that's sort of my metier, is people. Uh, and maybe words, but people, connecting with people. So that side of the job I was into, I was fine, I had no qualms. But every day uh, I was teaching a little bit of music and I wasn't up to it in some respects. That was good in one respect because it meant that I was able to say to anyone else who was like me, hey, look, you're a bit like me. We're not as good as the kids are at this. What can we do to make sure that whatever we're doing is actually helping them, not just, you know, a lid, a cap on their... A lid, a lid on their talent, uh, and that was that was a really good thing for me to experience. It's also pushed me to start to learn to play uh, the mandolin. I decided I wanted to play. I already play fretted strings. I wanted to play something that gave me an opportunity to play some serious classical repertoire. I've never played classical repertoire on an instrument, and so I thought the mandolin and maybe the mandola, the mandolin tuned like a violin mandola tuned like a viola. I could play the cello suites maybe, I could play the eventually maybe the violin sonatas and partitas by Bach. So and I love Bach. I, you know my music teachers when I was 16 played me some Bach and changed my world. And so I started learning the, the first cello suite on the mandola and I'm learning an instrument, learning to play classical music on an instrument. It is I mean talk about humbling could be humiliating, but humbling. I'm asking the kids for advice. They're seeing me strive and struggle as they have strived and struggled. And, you know, they are, some of these kids are just consummate young musicians. Just phenomenal. Uh, but there is one aspect of my personality and my skill set that many of them don't have, which is I'm, I'm, I'm really prepared to take risks. And I'm really keen to try new things and I don't mind making mistakes and uh, so I'm helping hopefully helping our kids to delve a little further into um, the creative side of their music making and we've actually instigated some programs at the school that uh, help along help that along so yeah it's, you're bringing a fresh approach to things yeah it's it's yeah and look it's not that I can necessarily teach them something about their instrument it's not that I can teach them something about uh, interpretation of a score. Maybe a little bit about interpretation, but not playing the notes from the score. That's their business. They're already expert at that. But, you know, why do you play that phrase softly? 
because my teacher told me to. Oh, well, that's a good reason. Okay. But why? You know, where, where's you in this performance? And, the, I mean, these kids, go, you give them a moment, they're like, <gasps> you mean I could do it myself? You know, I could try something different? I mean, you would experience that. Some of your kids, they just they give them a moment and they just start to fly. But if you say, these are the rules, fit within the lines, do this perfectly, then they'll just do that for as long as is required. Because they'll do it perfectly and they'll get praise for doing it perfectly. Um, but, you know, uh, that's, the, that's the fundamentals of music. That's the, that's the theory, that's the technical, and that's hugely important in classical music. It's, it's the, without that, you've got nothing. But there is something else after that. And while I might not have what they have in terms of technique, I didn't learn from when I was four. Um, many of our kids don't have the creative spark. They do, but they haven't been given permission. They haven't been given the opportunity to fail and to try and make mistakes and for it to be okay and for that to be fun. Uh, they've just had to be accurate and fluent. So, Ian, um, a few weeks ago, I came in at the lunchtime or break, and by the front door here at the Conservatory High School was a brightly painted piano, and there was one of your students playing, and you, the school principal, were standing there playing the guitar or the ukulele or something along with him, and I thought, this is the one school in the world that I could have survived in, <laughs> because it was a wonderful sight. Uh, it, it is the now, I mean... I was taken aback. A student in year last year, in year 11, uh, JJ, said, I want to hold some student concerts. I want the students to run their own concerts. I said, that's fantastic. What a great idea. Let's do that. When do you want to do it? And we made a time and he, they just did it. And they just started having concerts. And then uh, JJ said to me, would you, would you sing jazz? I play jazz. Would you sing a few songs with me? I'm like, yeah, that'd be great. Cool. And he goes, well, we'll do it on one of the student concerts. I'm like, okay, cool. So we did a, a couple of jazz standards. And uh, that day, normally it was in the, in the JPA, you know, slightly more formal. But that day just happened to be outside on the, on the public piano. And, uh, and so we, we did a few songs together. And then his little sister, who's also a wonderful young player, um, I mean, she learns violin with Maddie Easton, but she she learns jazz with one of the jazz guys next door. You know, it's incredible. She said, oh, could you, do you know this standard? And I said, yeah, yeah, I know that. She goes, well, let's do that one. I'm like, okay, um, I'll just get the lyrics up on the phone, shall I? <laughs> and we just, you know, made music together. I think like you, this is one place where I could uh, continue to learn and grow. Uh... I felt like I'd done most of what I could do at each of my previous schools and I needed to move to do the next thing. But here, there is so much more for me to do. So much more for me to grow, for me, to improve. And, uh, and the kids are so accepting. Uh, and it's sort of, maybe I'm a, a little bit, um, a, in some respects, a, a figure of uh, humour because I'm... Uh, I'm a music teacher who doesn't play a musical instrument as well as they do. But uh, they can see me making music and they can see the value in it. And I've got so much to learn that uh, hopefully the model is that teachers don't know everything. And once you know everything, you stop learning. Uh, because if that's the model of education, then the model is you're supposed to just know everything and then it's over. So that's certainly not the case for me. I've got so much to learn. I'm modelling the chance to maybe learn more and hopefully our kids will continue to do that. Ian, thanks for a wonderful chat. Thanks so much, Mark.